Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy. Up first, uh, kind of summarize the uh, weekend snow totals here uh, from Saturday night through today and uh, six to eight inches fell falling, ha had fallen at, at Thompson Pass and Valdez while uh, Girdwood about two to four inches and four to six over at Turnigan Pass, as well as at Seward and Cooper Landing about an inch. And that, a lot of these areas, that was uh, before it changed over to rain. And moving on to uh, the headlines here, another windy day. Uh, pretty windy conditions in some area. Kil Kilbuck here in the southwest interior, uh, in the hills there, they're about 1,500 feet. They had wind gusts 63 miles per hour, temperature 41 degrees for a high today. Uh, way up north there on the northwest coast, Red Dog, 60 mile an hour wind gusts uh, during the day today. And then all the way back down to Igigik, 55 mile per hour wind gusts. Again, uh, temperatures near 40. Platinum, a little farther to the north there on the uh, Cuscom Delta coast, 55 mile per hour winds. And then uh, the Yukon Delta, Marshall, or into the southwest interior, 52 miles an hour back down to Togiak there. Uh, north side or on the shore of Togiak Bay, obviously, 51 miles per hour. So pretty windy conditions, mild winds, uh, as opposed to the Arctic coast where the wind chill warnings are out. Cold wind chill warnings on the eastern Arctic coast, uh, much of the Arctic coast through tomorrow, but the eastern Arctic coast through Wednesday for wind chills 50, 55 below with those winds gusting 40 or more miles per hour. And moving on to the uh, hazardous weather graphic, as I mentioned, Got wind chill warnings out for the entire stretch of the Arctic coast here. Uh, actually, winter storm warnings and wind, low wind chills are included in that. And it's through uh, 3 p.m., let's see, or 9 p.m., no, 3 p.m. Tuesday here for the eastern or for the western side and the central coast. So the western coast and the west side, the wind chill, winter weather or winter storm warning is out. Uh, for uh, through tomorrow afternoon, 3 p.m., Eastern Arctic Coast through 6 p.m. Tuesday, and then Kaktovik and Barter Island, it's out through 3 p.m. Wednesday. And along with the cold wind chills I mentioned, I've got also snow, blowing snow with those 40 to, or actually 35 to 50 mile an hour winds, gusts, creating visibilities down to a quarter mile or less along a big stretch of the area there. Uh, throughout the day today and again that's going to continue tonight through tomorrow on the central and east, west side and through Wednesday on the east side. Now going to satellite imagery, see one surge of moisture, another surge of moisture here sliding northwestward, uh, mostly clouds, uh, precipitation not notably heavy, uh, some of the heavier amounts, uh, well Port Graham, southern Kenai Peninsula for example, just a tenth of an inch and uh, Igigik picked up about four tenths of an inch of precipitation as well as Togiak, otherwise amounts were less, uh, maybe a tenth of an inch out at Adak and St. George Island and even lesser amounts here of course over the interior. First uh, boundary moving northward and eastward here you can see really weakening, just clouds, had some a uh, little bit of moisture here along the North Gulf Coast but again very light amounts and anything that fell over the inland areas, again, was uh, negligible, not significant at all. Until you get up here to the Arctic coast and throw the winds in, temperatures well below zero, winds gusting 35, 50 miles an hour, blowing snow, whiteout conditions to maybe quarter miles on the visibilities in most areas. And over the panhandle, uh, had roughly maybe one to three tenths of an inch of rain during the day today in the north, and just a few hundreds down south, even though the cloud shield down there looks a little heavier, but uh, it's mostly just uh, thicker, higher top clouds are showing up better. Some clearing today, northern Kenai Peninsula, or actually from uh, turning an arm on into Anchorage and probably up into the Manuska and maybe sit in the valley, had some sunshine during the day today. And then you get into the high clouds down the inlet and then rain, Kodiak and along the southwest coast here, mostly from uh, Augustine Island on down to Sand Point. Showery conditions for Cold Bay, and the uh, Falls Pass King Cove areas and mixture of uh, just some scattered rain and snow showers for the Fox Islands, a little bit more for the Permalos, but again temperatures much warmer, winds a lot lighter than yesterday and then really cold air aloft here coming right straight south out of uh, the Russian Far East and the edge of that now into Adak, they're 31 degrees with snow, occasional snow showers there 
and uh, into the upper 20s out towards Shimeo with snow showers. Even Adak now changing over to snow as that area edges eastward here, coming around the bottom side of this uh, 971 millibar low southwest of the Perbolov. So the cold air coming southward on the western side and then the mild air coming north northwestward here, especially uh, behind this front. Not a bad day, actually. Lighter winds in the warm sector of this system. Rain showers in the Alaska Peninsula. And then the rain, again, not all that heavy, more of a wind producer than a precipitation producer. And then enough gradient up there in the Arctic coast to give those gusty winds and near blizzard conditions. Not too bad eastern interior as well, uh, central interior as well, scattered showers north Gulf Coast. And again, uh, freezing rain advisory due to end at 4 p.m. for the Haines area. Uh, I noticed, uh, I believe it's ended already there, or at least the freezing rain has ended there already and uh, scattered showers on down to the south. Forecast for tonight, uh, system organizes itself, not a very strong one as you can see, but pulls northward here. And the warm front with that will keep a chance of moisture in over the extreme northern panhandle, lower flying conditions, better down to the west, generally cloudy but dry. Dry over the eastern interior, dry over the much of the interior, especially in the eastern interior. And the Arctic coast still the snow blowing snow going on tonight. And then this front uh, weakening, but enough gradient to keep it breezy from northeast Bristol Bay right up into the St. Lawrence Island area, Bering Strait. Uh, still gusty winds along the northwest coast, but watch for them to diminish uh, throughout the night tonight, slowly. And uh, no wind for the Alaska Peninsula in a cold there behind the front. And then the northwest wind still this slowly eastward edging uh, trough. The leading edge of that colder air tomorrow, just draw it in as a cold front, moves right to the Fox Islands with uh, rain and snow light rain and snow at times, not real active. Again, this not any more of a precipitation producer, probably even less than the original front, which washes out into a trough up to the north there. And that'll leave some uh, flurries behind the western mountains and the uh, western Arctic coast, chance of some additional light snow, but not much. Clearing out here over the northwest, and a pretty good day over the interior. Delta Junction, a little breezy on those east winds, maybe some higher elevations in the interior, but nothing more than 25 miles an hour and uh, lower elevations, no wind at all, especially in the inversion areas. This front swings up, brings uh, a chance of rain. Actually, that low center tracks northwestward and pulls the moisture back to the northwest, which uh, holds it off the southeast coast here. But chance of rain, maybe, Sitka on up to uh, Elfin Cove. Better chance of moisture for Yakutat, occasional light rain, Cordova. Into western Prince William Sound. That gets up into western Prince William Sound late in the afternoon tomorrow, southern Kenai Peninsula. Kodiak, best chance of seeing some rain, as in Kamishak Bay, and I don't think any of that will get across the Aleutian Range into Bristol Bay. And taking a look ahead to Wednesday, pretty nice day here with the southeast coast. Uh, winds not too strong, maybe some uh, channeled outflow gusty winds, but uh, dry conditions, temperatures not bad at all. Interior looking good, dry all the way up, maybe some clearing along the eastern Arctic coast. So a big improvement going on there throughout the day, but again, that wind chill advisory or warning <laughs> holds on the east side through uh, 3 p.m. Wednesday afternoon. You can see a lot less gradient here, much nicer conditions on the west side. And chance of snow showers, St. Lawrence Island into the Yukon Delta, amounts very light once again and some uh, scattered rain or snow showers to the Perbolofts on down to the Alaska Peninsula. That'll be mostly snow though with that cold air uh, and then another system sliding over the top of the ridge. Uh, that may drop some snow into the Adak Atka area on Wednesday night. Moving on to lows for tonight, uh, 5 to 15 below eastern interior, near zero either side for the central Tanana Valley to 16 below at Token Northway. 15 to well, mid minus teens below zero on the Arctic coast, lower 30s to upper 20s in the southwest interior, upper 20s out there in the Aleutians, 38 Kodiak, mid to upper 30s for the Panhandle, cooler toward White Pass. Highs tomorrow, mid 20s near White Pass to lower 40s on down to the south and along the coast. Single numbers, Tanana Valley, a little below zero upper Yukon Valley, a little below zero along the Arctic coast, not too bad. Mid 30s still over the southwest interior, Bethel maybe upper 30s King Salmon, and upper 20s for South Central Alaska. For the lows, the following morning we've got, uh, again, above freezing for the most part in the panel. Some areas dropping below. Teens, the lower 20s, south of the Alaska Range, north side, back below zero, but not too far. As you can see, about 14 below at uh, Fort Yukon, 14 above out at Gamble. And uh, upper 20s now for Bristol Bay. And for Kodiak, upper 30s, uh, not too uncommon for this time of year. 
given the pattern, and upper 20s out over the Aleutians, mid 20s for the Permalofs, and uh, lower 30s there for the Unalaska area. Now moving on to highs for Wednesday afternoon, uh, five below up around the upper Yukon Valley area is kind of inversion there, a little below zero or near zero for the Arctic coast. 30s, southwest interior, upper 20s to lower 30s, south central Alaska, and the Panhandle mostly in the 30s, but uh, near 21 up at White Pass. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First aviation graphic showing IFR, Northern Bering Sea, right up into the Bering Strait, uh, back down along the Yukon Delta coast, Nunavak Island, and then back around into Togiak Bay, uh, along or just east of, or west of Dillingham, up into the Southwest Mountains. Marginal VFR, Southern Bering, Aleutians, pretty good VFR over the interior, and some IFR still. Western Northwest Copper River Basin, a little bit there near the mountains. Otherwise, not too bad into Cook Inlet and a little marginal for the Kenai Peninsula. Central Northern Panhandle tomorrow afternoon holds IFR there, east side of Kodiak Island, all day long. And mostly VFR here for the Panhandle, holding on to some marginal stuff way up north. Marginal VFR uh, makes something of a comeback here in the Copper River Basin, but not too bad. And then moisture lifting into uh, Western Prince William Sound late in the day, uh, bringing some marginal VFR with it. Otherwise, mostly VFR in the interior. Northeast interior, mostly marginal VFR, especially the 40-mile country here with uh, VFR for the Arctic coast. IFR holding here along the southwest coast of St. Lawrence Island, marginal for the Bering Sea and Aleutians. And for Wednesday morning, IFR still holding St. Lawrence Island right on down the southwest coast, a little farther inland now, especially over the Yukon Delta and right down to the Aleutian Range and Central Alaska Peninsula and marginal VFR starts breaking out to VFR here for the uh, Aleutians. Otherwise the bearing pretty marginal. A lot of VFR in the interior but a swath of IFR here. White Mountains down in the 40 mile country. And then for the afternoon forecast that area holds more or less spotty IFR and among the marginal stuff otherwise VFR either side of that. IFR, uh, still that band, narrower now, but still holding from St. Lawrence Island, Nunavak Island, Yukon, Cuscom Delta Coast, Cape Newenham. VFR here for the southeast coast into the Copper River Basin, Cook Inlet, Manuska, Susitna Valley. IFR there east side of Kodiak. And for passes, marginal VFR becomes VFR in the morning for Anatuvakan and VFR through the afternoon. Adigan, VFR from start to finish. Tomorrow, Lake Clark and Merrill starting out marginal early on, becoming VFR. Rainy. VFR the entire day. Windy, same forecast, good VFR. Isabel, VFR. Mentasta, though, uh, marginal VFR at times, or on the high end of marginal VFR, so it won't be all that bad. Could be VFR as well. And for Tanita, VFR, Portage, VFR, and then late in the afternoon or by early evening, some moisture slipping up from the south, uh, hitting this eastern entrance, could go marginal. And then for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR. And for the freezing levels, uh, that southerly flow pulling a pocket warm air aloft up about 2,000 feet here over the west central interior. And then on down Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island. Milder though, a little bit more of a gradient, but not too bad here. 2,000 feet northern and southeast coast, 6,000 down south. And uh, at the surface here, also inland tomorrow morning and north of the Pribilofs. And then hugging the North Gulf Coast. And then diving southward here, that cold air plunging southward out over the western bearing of the Aleutians. And for icing, none out west here expected, nothing significant over the interior. Just this uh, band here of moisture with the front that's coming up toward the coast and then stalling and weakening or slowing down. Kind of pulling west-northwestward here, just grazing the north coast of the Panhandle. Westward, Yakutat, Cape Yakutat, Cordova, maybe into the Wrangell Mountains, and then southern, Ke southern Kenai Peninsula, maybe and then uh, possibly here along the Alaska Peninsula, a little bit of isolated rime icing, maybe even mixed above 5,000 feet. Upper level wind flow chart uh, showing the jet stream upper ridging here actually from British Columbia right on up into the interior, northward into the Arctic, and uh, kind of the flow coming up from the south splitting up a little bit here with uh, 70 knots now over the uh, west coast and uh, weaker flow into the eastern north Gulf Coast. Main jet, west-northwest, south of the Aleutians, and really staying south of the area. 
And for the uh, 9,000 foot wind flow, we're seeing 40 knots off the southeast coast, 35 knots northern Gulf of Alaska, light 5 to 15 knotters over the eastern interior, 30 to 45 here over the western side along the coast, and west northwest 20 to 30 over the Aleutians. 3,000 feet, same pattern, northwest 15 to 25 out there, lighter here through a trough axis uh, across the eastern bearing, southeast 20 to 25. Lighter over the eastern interior, up to 30 off the southeast coast. Turbulence-wise, uh, not too bad. Arctic coast, occasional moderate chop there, uh, especially east side and then around Wainwright to Point Lay, otherwise light to isolated stuff down the west coast here. Pretty isolated over the interior. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. We have a big solar flare coming in, so we're out here on an aurora hunt. It's a CME, it's a dynamite, a coronal mass ejection. It's when the sun, it kicks off energy in these explosions that are larger than the earth explosion type things coming off of sunspots. And if that energy is pointing straight at the earth, it gets caught up in our magnetic field and that energy, electrons, come down our magnetic field, collide with oxygen up there about 50 or a couple hundred miles high and that's what generates the Northern Lights. My job as the photographer and the Aurora Hunter is to be in position, you know, location, location, location. And I like to think uh, I'm composing. Uh, Mother Nature, it's a bit of a teamwork thing, you know, she's got to put on the show but I have to be in the right position and of course with the right tools and the know-how. Um, I've stopped keeping track of how much time I spend out here in terms of hours. It's more in terms of uh, weeks or months or at this point years now. You know, it was always in me. Even when I was a kid growing up in the lower 48, I would spend nights sleeping on our trampoline, just staring at the stars. I'm in fourth grade and I'm going, wow, look at those stars. <laughs> and I'd see how many nights in a row I could sleep on the trampoline. And I think my record was 23 nights in a row. So I was doing kind of strange things for an Iowa country boy. I can remember specifically the very first time I saw the Northern Lights. It was 1989, the peak of the solar cycle, and I was going to graduate school in Laramie, Wyoming. And all of a sudden we had heard the Northern Lights were out. It's like, what are those? I'd never really seen them before. And my goodness gracious, we were on top of a mountain in the Laramie Range and they were turning blood red. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And the very first picture I took, that was 1990. Now, an old film camera, Pentax K1000 on a plastic Kmart tripod. Took two shots on slide film and got them back. And I thought, oh my gosh, this beautiful green thing swirling about. And from that moment, I was hooked. When I realized that you could preserve the auroras on film, I just experimented a ton. I, I'd had a, a heaping stack of of slides, the no good ones, the experiments gone wrong, you know, too dark, uh, fuzzy, out of focus, too light. I had this huge garbage can full of, of excess slide film, and that was just the learning curve. Well, when I go out here, um, it's all about getting the shot. And uh, we, my wife and I, we've called it the hero shot. But the hero shot is the one where you just come home and you go, look at this. And everyone goes, wow. And you're, you feel like a hero. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling. You know, it's always it's good for the ego, of course. It's good for the business. But if you kind of strip that away, it's just, it's good for what's inside of you because that's really the hero moment in nature. And Mother Nature's putting on this show that is just mind-blowing. It's unbelievable. When I first resigned from my day job, that was in 1996, and decided I wanted to become a full-time Aurora hunter, 
my goal from from that moment and to this day still is to get one hero shot a year i figured and i'm talking the kind that you somebody wants to buy from you and hang on their wall where the auroras are extremely bright very active turning colors where you can't believe your eyes if you're going to preserve a little sample of that with a photograph uh, well, it's what we call the hero shot. Wow, what a feeling. I mean, oh, you're just, you're, you're elevated, levitating. You are lifted up. Your spirits are so high that uh, I love that feeling. And I think I get that so much from seeing cool things in nature that I will go, way out of my way to to find that and I can you know the next day well I'll be just laying there thinking about it and thinking how lucky I was or how fortunate um, of course I just you know spent two weeks sitting there staring at the sky and not seeing anything so you got to remember that you know luck is kind of a relative term but I still just feel incredibly lucky to be even in a position to where I could have been there, taken a photograph of it, and just mainly experienced it. Well, that, that feeling could last for days. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Hello, or welcome back. Uh, today's sea ice analysis, uh, not much different from yesterday, so about the same distance, St. Matthew Island and uh, Bristol Bay. Uh, forecast uh, by Wednesday, by late Wednesday, those uh, southeast winds, the warmer temperatures are going to drop off dramatically and uh, then become light for the remainder of these five to six day period along the ice edge. And so over the next three days, due to those easterly winds, ice expected to move westward 10 to 15 nautical miles. And uh, temperatures conducive to uh, melting a little bit for the ice in northern Cook Inlet. And for the southeast coast, small craft advisories all along the coast, 25 knots on the south coast, 13 foot seas, and east southeast to 30 knots north coast, north 25, five foot seas for Lynn Canal. And north 20 there for Stevens Passage, east at 10 for Clarence Strait. And then for Wednesday, northeast 15 for Clarence Strait. East winds 20 to 25 knots here along the south coast, east 20 for the north coast, seas 9 to 11 feet. And uh, Lynn Canal, north winds 45 knots with seas 9 feet. So big increase in the winds coming up uh, for Wednesday there. And Stevens Passage even kicking up to 30 knots out of the north. And for Prince William Sound, northeast 15 tomorrow with easterly winds at 30 knots turning northeast here at the same speed for the western zone. Kamishak Bay and the Barrens, northeast 25 knots with seas running 8 to 9 feet, north 25, southern Cook Inlet, northeast 15, northern Cook Inlet. Outlook for Wednesday, northeast 25 here for the northern inlet, north 30 for the area south of the Forelands. And uh, northeast 35, so minimum gales for Kamishak Bay, and east 30 for the Barrens, 25 knots out of the east for the entire North Gulf Coast, and northeast at 20 with four foot seas for Prince William Sound. East side of Kodiak tomorrow, northeast at about 20, seas up to 13 feet. Stronger winds a little bit, but lighter on the or lower sea heights there for Shellacoff Strait at six feet. Southeast 30 knots, southwest to Sitkanak, and then from Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev, west at 15, south 25 on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, southeast 30 for Bristol Bay. Northeast 20 for the bay the next day, Alaska Peninsula, northerly 25 knots, east northeast 30 knots for Kodiak Island. Aleutians, Fox Islands, uh, west to southwest or maybe even northwest at 20 to 25 knots with seas running 9 to 14 feet. Northwest 30, Adak and Atka, all the way out to Kiska, Kiska to Shimia, northwest at 25. Those drop off here, lighter winds, western Aleutians, west of Adak at 20 knots out of the west and uh, northwesterlies come down to 20 knots for Adak and Atka and the Fox Islands. Northwest winds 20 to 30 knots, seas running around 10 feet. 
Southwest coast, southeasterlies tomorrow, 25 to 30 knots with those 30 knot winds here from the North Shore and Nunavak Island. Right on up to St. Lawrence Island, turning easterly in Norton Sound, southwest 20 for the Purple Off, south 25, St. Matthew Island. I'll look for Wednesday, easterlies 15 to 20 here out of Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, northeast 10 to 15, southwest coast, northwest 20 for the Purple Offs and 15 knots for St. Matthew Island. And for the uh, Beaufort Sea coast here, east side there, 45 knots tomorrow out of the east, almost a storm but not quite, and then gales here all the way to the central coast. Brisk wind advisories west side all the way down to the Bering Strait. And the outlook for Wednesday, here from uh, Wales up to Cape Thompson is still brisk wind advisories through Wednesday, but 15 knots from Cape Thompson up the west side and then back into brisk wind advisories in the central coast, holding on to those gales through Wednesday, but uh, starting to come down late in the afternoon. And then for tonight, uh, again, winter storm warning out central and west side through tomorrow afternoon for the Arctic coast. Wind chills of 50 below and visibility is down to a quarter mile or less in blowing snow. That warning out through Wednesday afternoon on the east side. Not bad over the interior, though, all the way down into uh, Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound. Some scattered showers, uh, occasional light rain, Kodiak Island, and then a mixture of moisture here along the southwest coast. So these winds gradually coming down and snow showers out over the western central Aleutians. For tomorrow, this rain doesn't quite have enough push to the east. Comes back to the northwest, so occasional light rain, Prince William Sound, slipping up into the west side late in the day, more likely Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak. And then for Wednesday, nice over the interior, light winds, a big improvement in the Arctic coast. Dry with some sunshine over the panhandle, a little breezy in areas, especially Lynn Canal, 45 knots. And snow showers out over the southern eastern Bering Sea down to the Aleutians with uh, rain for Kodiak again. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.